Hi Sumos! I'm Stacy from the Sumo Learn team, and today we're going to take a look at one of my favorite features, search templates. Do you ever have casual users of your searches that get frustrated trying to understand your queries? Especially when there's just one or two changes that they need to make. Search templates allows you to extract just the information someone else might want to enter and put that into a query. Behind the scenes, search templates offer the ability to extract information out as a parameter and for you as the search owner to decide how that input should look. In this case, I have a pretty simple search, login by users, and people want to be able to come in and see if maybe their IP address is, their user ID is accessing from more than one state. So I'm going to go ahead and say that maybe Angad is looking for whether or not he's considered a traveler. That would be someone in a security use case who's logged in in more than one place in an impossible distance in that time. So let's take a look just at Angad's logins. And now as I get closer to it, I see that Angad is pretty much in one geographical area, has been logging in entirely from the San Francisco office this week, not a traveler. And these parameters are very easy to create. All you need to do is highlight any text within the search and select create a parameter, or if you love hotkeys, and I love hotkeys, uh, you can go ahead and use Alt-V once you've highlighted the text. But today we'll use the interface. All right, when you do this, what it's gonna happen is it'll pull up the Manage Parameter Settings, and this is where you make your users' lives easier. If you use Parameter 1, Parameter 2, you can have up to 10 parameters, it's not gonna make a lot of sense to them. So you need to be as descriptive as possible with the name. In this case, I'm going to say data source. And it's going to be mad at me because that parameter name is invalid. You need to have a parameter name that would scan within the search. So we're going to say data underscore source. Um, the default value, you always need to leave a default value even if that's star. So I'm going to leave service there. That's probably the best for them to look at everyone that's using the service. And then data type. Data types are great. If you're replacing like a time slice, you may want to just restrict people to number. If you want to allow people to enter in a data source, I recommend string as you may use you know, a word or a phrase. If it can be either, I say go for any, um, but they can also input into the input field whatever they need to do. So any is a great choice when it can be a number or a string. We also have sumo logic keyword. And these are great when you're dealing with error or fail, keywords that we've optimized on the back end. But I'm going to go with string. That's most appropriate to my data source. Now, if data source is hard or maybe other people understand a different term, I can always pop in a description here, your desired source category. Great. Now set the values for the parameter. Um, if you need a list of autocomplete values for your user, you can choose from text entries, label value pairs, or lookup. I'm going to select text entry, and I'm going to provide service, which is what I'm using currently. Or if I want people to just use something internal, I'm going to say internal. Great. That's it. You've now built a parameter. And if you're unsure if you did it correctly, you can always use the preview mode and see how those values will play out in your search. Now if you notice here I've got Angad, but here I have a user ID. And for that user ID, we've done a lookup. So we're substituting first names for these machine readable fields. Let's pop open Manage Parameter Settings 
and you can see that lookup is used with the lookup operator and a saved search. So I'm using a query of all my current users and we're checking in real time to make sure that those lookups are valid. So if I pop that over there and I'm using an invalid lookup, guess what? It's going to tell me right away. You're going to need to select some fields. You're going to need to choose your keys. Because with the valid lookup, we're able to pull in the user ID, the last name, the count, whatever field values you want. And then the keys or labels that can be corresponding to those values, which is great. You can also enter in key value pairs. So if, for example, you already have a list of acceptable states and state codes, you can switch those back and forth using these label value pairs. Either you can call the appropriate value or they can use the label. This will support up to 10,000 label value pairs, but each needs to be entered on a separate line separated by a comma. Great. If you ever need to delete a parameter, just go ahead, delete parameter. When you delete the last parameter, you've essentially deleted your search template. Using this template is pretty easy for your users. And if you hit add to dashboard, you can transfer these parameters to dashboard filters. So let's go ahead and choose dashboard, my user dashboard. And add. And the only tricky thing here is that if dashboard filters already exist for that dashboard, you stand the prospect of overriding them with the filters you've created with the search template. So you could rename your search parameters and go back into that description field, or if in my case, I want these parameters, I don't mind if they're dashboard wise, they're actually overriding exactly the same values, I'll click add to panel. And there you go. My dashboard filters are now available as panel wide filters. And I can pick out on guide and I can filter. Great. If you have any questions, we also have documentation. Thank you.